Hi guys, Ron here and welcome to the workshop. Many of you have been asking about my time trial helmet because it's not a very typical one and it's different from the ones that I've used before. So the very first one I had was the POC Cerebel. I didn't like that too much. Well, then I had the Giro Arrowhead, which is a nice high quality fast helmet. But then <coughs> I went uh, to do some internal testing and track aero testing in January and I've tried 10 more different helmets including uh, the Cask Bambino, Laser Victor, my own air head, the Cask Mistral, uh, the Pox Cerebral as mentioned previously but also other ones like the Catlike, uh, I don't know, Catlike Time Trial Helmet uh, then the Laser Victor, uh, some other laser helmets so in total 10 different helmets from which I chose the fastest one which will be presented to you right here and it was fastest by a good margin only the Medron white body well basically that was the only helmet that came close but more on that later so what this helmet is obviously it's a helmet from cask but it's not your typical one it's not your bambino which many people use uh, and for the reason that uh, the Bambino is a short tail helmet and those uh, just don't work very well at all for me and that's because I ride in a proper time trial position now no offense is meant here but uh, the market is heading towards the short tail helmets uh, which as testing shows are only really good for age group triathletes who ride in those well Again, no offense meant here, but uh, really weird and non aero positions at all. If you want to ride fast on a time trial bike and you're in a proper position, you need something with a tail more, uh, more often than not. So this is Cask's longest helmet, uh, even longer than the Bambino Pro Evo, which Team Sky uses, although very close in shape and length, but still. Uh, this is the Mistral, so it's Cask's... Uh, track focused helmet primarily so it's a bit different than what most other people use and it was uh, as I said by far the fastest helmet a good 8 watts faster than my own time trial helmet from before and some 20 even 30 watts faster than some other helmets so let's have a look uh, what it looks like This is what you get in the box, so nicely foam padded box. The visor sits in here originally, I didn't put it back on. Uh, you also get a nice duffel bag for carrying, very nicely padded with a, with a suede uh, inside, so very good stuff. You don't get that with a Giro Arrowhead. And actually the whole helmet is very, very different from the Arrowhead not just in performance but in design and uh, looks and construction as well so as you can see quite a long tail helmet with this nice swooping back perfectly sits my back as you may have seen in the wind tunnel shots uh, I went for this uh, black and gray version this is uh, of course the color that matches my bike the most the paint is beautiful also the glitter effect on the grey and the back very very nice finish I already have a Cask Protone and the finish is just top notch uh, the best uh, finish I would say from any helmet manufacturer that I've seen so far in terms of pure build quality should I say and uh, yeah you might say okay a fast helmet is very nice it's crucial for the aero performance but what really keep, makes me happy about this helmet is that it's very user friendly and very comfortable as well which uh, well aerodynamics by themselves wouldn't be very very useful so uh, let me talk more about that I've already ridden this helmet uh, in a 50k time trial this week and of course quite a lot of time I spent in it not my own one though uh, in the wind tunnel and on the track with Aero Coach, so I have a good understanding of how it performs apart from the numbers 
so the first thing that was a problem uh, with me on the arrowhead. On the arrowhead you get this uh, brow in front of the visor and that's, uh, that's fine, that's for aerodynamics but the problem is that as soon as I start to get into those lower aero positions, the one we are setting up with the head low, which were very fast for me, uh, I can, well because of the orientation of the head, I can no longer see because of that brow and also because the visor is tinted and it's very hard to get a clear visor for the arrow head, they're not uh, readily available, at least here. Uh, so those two reasons uh, were a bit wrong and then no matter how I adjusted my head I couldn't get the arrowhead to fit flush uh, with my back and this one as you can see nice and wide uh, teardrop shape with the curvature here so as I said fits super flush ventilation mm, it's not a super ventilated helmet as you can see only these tiny vents and the exhaust port at the back uh, the visor is solid with no vents on it so it's not the coolest helmet of course uh, but again I think if you're time trialing usually the longest time trials around 40-50 kilometers but very rarely more likely 15 to 20 and in these events uh, you go fast and if you go fast you don't really need to worry about ventilation that much of course, if you're a triathlete doing an Ironman, you're going much slower. It's a whole different story. You're on the bike for five hours, four or five hours. Ventilation is a consideration there. Here, I think not so much. Uh, here, as I said, visibility is perhaps the most uh, crucial factor. And here, the nice, clear, tented visor uh, just performs. It's very, very thin, so it's light, but you have to be careful with it. It attaches magnetically, which is a neat feature, also just like on the arrowhead, but the doesn't have that nice, oh, actually, it does, so I didn't actually know this, and Cask never mentioned it, but still you can put it up like on the arrowhead, which I've just discovered, so yeah, quite useful these YouTube videos, uh, yeah, so the visor. As you can see, it's not a fancy cult size or whatever kind of optics provider you might slap on it. It's just cask branded. I haven't found any distortion or any disturbing effects in it. It's very nice. It doesn't come loose, even on rough roads. And yeah, it's just comfortable. Also, a good thing is that on the arrowhead, my sweat was dripping from the brow right on to the visor. Here it doesn't really happen, and I've done a time trial, as I said, 50 kilometers, and didn't really have a problem with visibility. <clears throat> so that's very nice. Comfort, very comfortable as well. It has the same style of padding that you get in other cask helmets. Also the strap, very similar. Uh, the lower part of the strap is very solid, which might not uh, sound important, but actually it's good because it fits snug uh, against your head and doesn't flap around, can't flap around. So that's very good for aerodynamic reasons. And also it means that the helmet will stay put. Retention system, uh, again, same adjustability as on other cask helmets. Nothing uh, major there in terms of differences. No MIPS liner, none of the cask helmets has it so far. Uh, I don't know, that's not much of a consideration for me, for someone it might be. And then finally I would like to have a look at the construction. So why is this so much different than other helmets I've tried? Uh, well, I'd like to point out, might not be uh, immediately obvious, but actually the EPS liner is just on this area of the helmet. So basically like a standard road helmet, a road lid. Uh, and this, all this is basically just a fairing from a thin thermoplastic, as you can see. Uh, here it's quite flexible, so it's easy to put on. Actually, you don't even have, to, or at least I don't even have to take off the visor to pull it off, uh, which is nice. And then at the back, 
yeah, you have to be careful for manipulation, but this is all just hollow plastic. Uh, for example, like in a head wheel, like a carbon fairing, this is exactly the same. The helmet, as in a helmet, a protective version, is just basically this area, like in a road helmet. Uh, and some people might say, okay, that might not be as durable or robust, and that's true until you take the arrowhead again for my example it's a solid EPS all the way and it's half a kilo this one uh, is just 300 grams and okay in time training aerodynamics is key uh, weight not so much uh, but here in a helmet where you have to keep your head tucked in after one hour your shoulder blades and neck will be extremely thankful for those 200 grams lost in the helmet. And of course it helps some on the climbs as well, but not important. This is the important factor for me, because if you need to put your helmet uh, or head low, it's really, really going to help. Uh, another interesting feature is this little trip layer, as you can see, or trip line. That helps to smooth out the airflow and keep it attached to the helmet, also here. And generally, from what I hear from AeroCoach, the cask helmets, all of them, have really, really high level aerodynamics. Of course, most of it is how a helmet fits your position and your body shape, but also, yeah, they are just plain good and bad helmets. This is certainly one of the good ones. And it's not even expensive or that expensive if you compare it to others, even though it's a premium product. So overall, super happy with my helmet, very, very fast. Uh, 8 watts faster at 45 km per hour uh, than my Arrowhead was. And again, the only thing that came close was the matte drone widebody, which itself also is a very nice helmet. In the head up position, there's not much difference, but in the cask I can get my head lower and then I get an additional 5-6 watts. So this is why I went for this one and also because I like the looks and the overall quality and feel and how it is to ride in it. So yeah, this was my detailed review of the cask Mistral. It's a very fa fast helmet, the fastest in fact for me, if you ask for you. Honestly, I can't say. You should contact Air Coach, get some testing done, and then you will know for sure. They have a wide selection of helmets, which you can choose from, including this. Uh, okay, so I think that's all for today. If you want to know more about how I do in this helmet and on my complete time trial setup uh, in my time trial next weekend, then don't forget to tune into the channel and subscribe. It's all for today. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.